Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at a difficult perpendicular line problem where we have a diagram involved, and this one isn't a particularly nice one. So feel free to pause the video there, have a go at this question, but otherwise, stick with me, and let's get started. Okay, here we go. So for this question here, it says A, B, C, D is a rectangle, and we can see that rectangle just there. If I highlight it, there we go. So there's the rectangle that we're looking at. It says A, E, and B are points on the straight line L. So now we're looking at L here, and that is a straight line. And that line has the equation X plus 2Y equals 12. A and D are points on the straight line M. So we've got another line there, M, which we can see. And it says A to E and e to b uh, is, are equal. So that means from here to here, and if I swap colors from there to there, they're equal, so e is the midpoint of a, b. Find an equation for m. Now let's just think about what we've got here. So we have the line l, where e is the midpoint. We know that it's a rectangle, so these two lines, the line l and the line m, are perpendicular, so therefore we can think about our perpendicular gradients using a negative reciprocal. And we know that, well, we know that E is the midpoint. So let's think about how we can go about doing this. So we have the equation for L, which is our important part. So as we have the equation for L, we can figure out the gradient of L. And once we've got the gradient of L, we can get the gradient of M. And then we'll think about where we might have a problem from there. So at the moment, we need to rearrange this equation. So I want to make it say Y equals. So I'm going to minus the X to the other side. So I'll get 2Y equals negative X add 12 and then I need to divide by 2 so I get y equals and when I divide negative 1 by 2 I get negative 1 over 2 or negative a half x plus and I've divided 12 by 2 so 6 so there's the equation of line L so in terms of the gradients if the gradient m is equal to negative a half then the perpendicular gradient which I'll write as mp is equal to positive 2 so flipping it over and changing the sign so that's going to be important there because that is the gradient of line L. Okay, so let's get rid of some of those. So now I know the gradient, what else do I need to actually get the equation? Well, I need a coordinate on that line. So there's two coordinates that I could have a look at. I could look at the coordinate D, or I could look at this coordinate here where they intersect. Now, to get the coordinate d, I'd need to probably go do a little bit more complicated things here because I'd need to know the equation of the line d to c, so I could find out there, therefore where it intersects the line. Now, I haven't used any of the other information, so actually, I'm going to have a look at working out where this line, a to b, crosses over the x-axis there at point b. If I can figure out where it crosses the x-axis, then what I'm going to be able to do is follow a bit of a pattern as E is the midpoint, I know that the distance between those two, so however far left and up I have to go to get to E, I know that that distance is gonna be the same as this distance here. So I should be able to follow a bit of a pattern to get to that point A using a little bit of that logic there. So I'm gonna ignore point D, I'm gonna go and try and find point A. So let's have a go. Now I know the equation of this line. The equation of this line, we've just worked it out, is Y equals negative a half x plus six. Now where that line crosses the x-axis, we know the coordinate of the y coordinate. So we don't know the x, but we know the y coordinate would be zero. Okay, any position on the x-axis, the y coordinate is zero. So if I substitute zero into my equation in place of y, I'll be able to solve that to find x. So zero is equal to negative a half x plus six. Now I can add this half x to the other side. So I get one half of x equals six, and you can get quite a logical answer there. Half of 12 must be equal to six, but we're gonna divide both sides by a half. To solve that, six divided by a half is 12, so it follows our, it gets our logical answer anyway. So the x coordinate there is 12. So to move left and up to point E, I'd have to go left 12. I can write that as minus 12. It's up to you how you prefer to write that and 
then I'm going to go up to point E. So what is that y-intercept? Well, we know the y-intercept because it's written in our equation. It's just here, plus 6. So if the y-intercept there is 6, we know we go up 6. So our pattern, it goes left by 12, up by 6. So again, I'm going to go left by 12, up by 6. How's that going to change that coordinate? Well, the x-coordinate is going to go to minus 12, because we're going from 0, left by 12. And the y-coordinate is going from 6 up by 6, so that's going to go to positive 12. So the coordinate of a is negative 12, 12. And that part there is probably the hardest part of this question. Although on the face of it, that's the easiest mathematical process there, just moving left and up, left and up. Spotting that is very, very tough. So I think that's the difficult part of this question, as long as you know this topic well. You might know perpendicular lines very well, negative reciprocals, equations of lines, all of the topics involved with this, but spotting that is very difficult. So now we know the coordinate, we can sub it into our equation. And we know that the gradient of the line is going to be 2, positive 2. So if we write y equals 2x plus c, and then we're going to substitute in our x and y value. So y is 12, so 12 equals two lots of the x coordinate, which is negative 12 plus c. So 2 times negative 12 is going to be negative 24. So 12 equals negative 24 plus c. Add 24 to the other side, you get c is equal to 36. And there's the y-intercept of the line m. So now we know that value. We know that c is equal to 36. We already know the gradient. So we'll just write that back into our line equation. So y equals 2x plus 36. And there is the equation of line m. And that is the end of that question. There we go. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. Just before we go, I'm just going to quickly show how you can access more of these types of difficult questions. So if you want a more in-depth look looking at this topic, you want to go through some more practice questions, just understanding the basics behind this topic, I'll link the full video in the description, you can see it on the screen. And within that video, if you click into the description, just like this one, you'll see that all of the topics are listed there as well. So even if you're not sure on that topic and you figure out the bits that you're not sure on, they're all there, they're all linked to the description and they're all there for you to practice. So hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one.